Hey everybody, Nicholas JMV here. Welcome to another math tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about a free response question. This comes directly off the AP Classroom website, and this one has no calculator, which we're not going to need anyway. So it's important to realize that, again, I emphasize this, you get about 15 minutes per question on the AP FRQ portions for each topic. So roughly you're going to budget about four minutes per problem here, four minutes per part because there's four parts. So we have this curve, and it's x, y squared minus 2x cubed equals 2. And that's for y greater than or equal to 0. Now since I can't really solve for y very easily, we're going to use implicit differentiation. We also have to know some other rules like chain rule and product rule, which I'll put some links in uh, up here for you to see some other tutorials I've made. Uh, this first part is going to involve a product rule. So first is our x function. We're going to take that, we're going to times that the derivative of our second. So the derivative of y squared is just 2y. And remember, we've got to multiply that by dy dx or y prime. I use y prime because it gets messy. So that's the first part, first times derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of our first. That's the product rule for xy squared. Now we take the derivative of 2x cubed, so it's minus their power rule 6x squared, and the derivative of any constant is, is 0. Okay, So what we're going to do now is we're going to solve this for y prime. But I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as 2xy times y prime, so I can just see it a little better. Okay. Uh, now remember, this is a tutorial on an exam. I'm not going to be changing colors and taking. I'm going to be moving quickly and efficiently. So that's really important to realize. Okay. So we're going to solve for that red term there, y prime, by moving the y squared over by subtraction and moving the x. Uh, squared term by adding. So we have 2x whoops, times y prime, 2xy times y prime, excuse me, equals 6x squared minus y squared. And now we're going to go ahead and divide, divide each side by 2xy. And hopefully you see now that, yep, looks like we're going to, we're definitely going to show that our derivative is equal to that. So we're just showing what they told us. Hey, is this the derivative? Well, according to us, they do have the correct derivative and it's right there. So there's y prime. So we've just shown that. Probably worth two points. In part b, they want an equation. And an equation of the line tangent. For an equation, you need a point and you need a slope. Well, we've already got the point and we've already got the slope. So we're actually just going to substitute in. You're going to have y prime is equal to 6 times x squared minus y squared all over 2 times x times y. So wherever there's an x, there's a 1. Wherever there's a y, there's a 2, right? Because x and y there. So I go ahead and do that, and I'm going to go ahead and simplify this out, which will give me 1 half. I get 6 minus 4 over 4, which is 1 half. There's my slope. I've got my point. Use point slope form. You get y minus 2. y minus y1 equals your slope. 1 half times x minus x1. Uh, a lot of times we see this now as just here. So you can stop what I just wrote, but don't be alarmed if AP shows you this. I'll show you that step. So there is the equation of the line tangent to the curve. That curve is, remember, defined by that at the point 1, 2. Now, in part C and D, those are the, the bigger parts. We need the x coordinate, the x value of some point P, which uh, the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. Well, what they're talking about there is dy dx being 0. dy dx is 0, a horizontal slope. Okay, so we want our slope to be 0. Well, if our derivative, if, if our slope is equal to this, the only way to make a fraction 0 is to make the numerator 0. So we're going to go ahead and set our numerator 6x squared minus y squared equal to 0. But there's a problem here. There's too many unknown variables. 
So we're actually going to take our original equation, and if you look back up, you're going to see that there's a y squared in there. So we're taking our original curve, and I'm going to put it here, x squared, or excuse me, x y squared minus 2x cubed equals 2. I'm going to solve that for y squared. So I'll have x y squared equals 2 plus 2x cubed. And then I'm going to go ahead and, sorry about that, I'm going to go ahead and divide each side by x, so I get y squared is equal to 2 plus 2x cubed over x. Okay, I'll probably move this over a little bit more too because I need the space. So why would I do that? Why would I solve and for y squared here? Well, the answer is simple. There's too many unknowns, and if I do this, I'll have one equation and I'll have one variable there. And so there it is so far. I've got this nice equation now with one variable, and I'm gonna go ahead now and get a common denominator. So we're gonna multiply this by x over x. So this becomes six x cubed. We're gonna change everything. So minus two, minus two x cubed, all divided by x. I've made a common denominator. And I could go ahead and simplify the numerator there. Uh, we've got some like terms, so I have zero equals four x cubed minus two over x. And now we're gonna go ahead and cross multiply here. It's a proportion and we get four x cubed minus two and that's equal to zero, right? X times zero. And we got the variable x, that's great, because we want the x coordinate. And just go ahead and solve this cubic for x by adding to, we'll divide by four, divide by four. So x cubed equals one half. Or cube rooting both sides, you get x equals one over the cube root of two. And leave that answer, don't rationalize it. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know on that one. That was a great problem. And we're on to the last one. This is crucial, the second derivative. So that means I have to take my first derivative and go ahead and find my second derivative. So we have 6x squared minus y squared over 2xy. So we're gonna use a quotient rule here. And what's really important is we're gonna substitute in right after we take the derivative. We're not gonna simplify it, and I'll show you what we mean. So we have bottom, this is a big one, bottom, times the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is 12x minus the derivative of y squared, which is 2y times y prime. Whoops, that's it, bottom times the derivative of the top, got it, minus top, times the derivative of the bottom. The bottom is now a product rule again, so first times the derivative of the second plus second times derivative of the first. And this is now all over bottom squared. That's the derivative. Now they want to know what the derivative is at the point one, two. So now we're just gonna plug in x and y. We're not gonna multiply out, we're not gonna expand, we're just gonna plug in our numbers. So wherever there's x, we're plugging one. Wherever there's y, we're plugging in two. So if you do two times one times two, you get four times 12 times one, which is 12, right? Because x is one minus y is two, two times two, is four, but y prime, remember, if you go way back up, y prime in part b was one half at the point one, two. So remember, y prime is equal to one half, and that's from part b. So two times two is four times one half is just two. I'll put that in just red there for a moment. Okay, minus six times one, which is six. 
minus two squared, which is four, six minus four is two, times two x, which is two times one, which is two, two times one half is one, one plus four is five, all divided by two times one times two, which is four, four squared is 16. And we simplify from there, which is 40 minus 10 over 16, which ends up being 15 eighths when you simplify it. So that is an implicit differential equation from AP Classroom. Great example, classic implicit differentiation. We found the, we, we showed the derivative was equal to this. We found the equation of a tangent line. We found an x coordinate at a specific point when the horizontal, when the slope was zero. And we found the second derivative at a particular point. All good things. We use plenty of rules there. So if you have any questions or comments about this particular FRQ, please type them below. I'll try to do my best to answer them. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe this video. This is Nicholas JMV, and we'll see you next time.